What's up, it's Chris Heria. Today I'm gonna to be showing you in just five simple steps how I went from only being able to do 20 push-ups in my room to full planche push-ups like you just saw. But first, let's cover some interesting things that you may not have known about the full planche push-ups. Now first off, what is a planche? The word planche comes from the French word planche, meaning board or plank. So in regards to the planche we know today, having a straight body, but with your elbow pits turned facing forward and locked out as you press up with your arms while leaning forward. Your hands should be aligned with your waistline, allowing your body to balance at your center of gravity. So the weight of your upper and lower body counterbalance one another and essentially suspending your body parallel to the ground for time. The planche push-up on the other hand mixes the isometrics exercise with a powerful dynamic exercise by adding the push-up aspect and is done when your only point of contact with the ground or any surface is with your hands while your body maintains a completely horizontal position from your head to your toes and you bend at your elbows while leaning forward as you lower your body before pressing back up to locked elbows. During the full planche and the full planche push-up your hands are always aligned with your waistline both at the top of the push-up and at the bottom of the push-up. So a little about the history of the planche and planche push-ups. Although we don't know exactly when the first planche was done, we do know it has been seen in its many variations in gymnastics, street workout, breakdancing, circus acts, and acrobatics. One of the earliest recorded planches was done by a gymnast in 1938, where you can see the beginning forms of what resemble a planche today, with locked out elbows but with a bend in the lower back. Breaking that horizontal line we consider a proper or real planche of today. Moving on to the 1980s, breakdancing started to rise in popularity, and is also where you start to see early iterations of a planche and planche push-up with flares and elbow levers. And by the early 2000s, moves like air push-ups started to look closer to what a planche push-up would look like today. Now taking a look at street workout, you can see too that in 2011, an early planche push-up, while requiring a tremendous amount of strength, also had a bend in the lower back. Today, both in gymnastics and street workout, otherwise known as calisthenics, the standard of a true planche and planche push-up have been raised with extra emphasis on proper form, locked out elbows with a straight back. So you might be wondering, what are planche push-ups good for? Planche push-ups are great for building superhuman relative strength, big power powerful shoulders and triceps, but also develop balance and mind-muscle connection as you will use all the muscles of your body in unison to perform the exercise. Now that you've learned some things about the planche and planche push-ups, let's get you to actually do your first 19, planche push-up. 20. All right, so if I'm gonna show you how I went from only being able to do 20 consecutive push-ups to full planche push-ups, we're gonna start where I first started. That was in my room, right beside my bed on the floor. But for those of you that are still working on being able to do a push-up or working your way up to 20 push-ups, you should check out my video on how to do the perfect push-up or how to increase your push-up repetitions. I'll link them down below. But yeah, at this point back in the day, I actually had a morning routine and I've made videos on it before. I would do 100 push-ups a day or pretty much every other day, at least about five days out of the week. And doing 100 push-ups a day alone is gonna get you very comfortable with the pushing movement, making your planche push-ups a whole lot easier. But over time, as you get stronger, you're gonna start doing different push-up styles to complete your 100 push-ups a day. And one variation I started incorporating was the pseudo planche push-up, and that's actually step one of beginning to learn your full planche push-ups. So if you can do 20 push-ups in a row, which is where I started, you can definitely do at least five to 10 pseudo planche push-ups. Now to do pseudo planche push-ups, I covered it many times on my vlog before, but the goal is to do push-ups from your waistline. Now that can happen gradually over time. Now a couple technique tips while you're doing this exercise. So first to start off with a normal push-up grip, but with your hands placed slightly lower down the body than normal and your hands turned out with your thumbs facing forward that's gonna give your wrists more range of motion for your hands to be that far back as you lower down in your push-up the first time you try this you may only be able to put your hands lower by an inch or two but as you train more consistently you'll be able to do your push-ups with your hands placed from a lower and lower position until you're able to finally push from your waistline from the top of the push-up position you want to make sure that you're in a straight line and you're completely one unit pointing your toes and your chin with your core tight including every other muscle in your body tight even your glutes your calves and the grip that you have on the ground. Now what's going to make this easier and build strength faster is if you do it with your feet against the wall. That's going to allow you to stay stationary and allow you to push with your hands lower locked in place. If your feet weren't placed against the wall, you wouldn't have resistance to fight against and it would make it a lot more difficult. So over time as you get stronger, you can do it without the wall. Also another huge tip, if you practice your pseudo planche push-ups holding onto low parallel bars by your waistline, this will be a whole lot easier and you'll progress a whole lot faster because you're able to apply more force through your wrists. And if you need a pair of low parallel bars that you can take anywhere to train just like these, pick Pick up some of your own at thenix.com slash shop. And for step one, along with training your pseudo planche push-ups and mastering it, you also want to be incorporating weighted dips. This is going to build enormous pushing strength as well as the muscles required for pushing like your chest and your triceps, as well as your core. Improving your absolute and relative strength, which is actually exactly what's required for a full planche push-up. For example, you can bench 500 pounds or over and still won't be able to do a full planche push-up. The relative strength and training absolutely need to be there. And when you're doing your full planche push-ups, make sure that you're using full range of motion all the way down and all the way back to the top with your arms locked out. That's gonna help later on solidify your full planche holder. And that moves on
on to the next exercise, which you should definitely be training with your pseudo planche pushups and weighted dips. That's going to be weighted pull-ups. And that's because not only do they also improve your absolute and your relative strength, but antagonist training, in this case, pulling being the opposite of pushing, will improve the opposing force, making you progress a whole lot faster and getting you stronger a whole lot faster as well. Now, to be able to do weighted pull-ups or weighted dips, you're going to need to have a weight belt or a weight vest. You can pick that up at chrisharia.com or you can pick up a weight belt at thenx.com. But if you're doing this right now and you have absolutely nothing, your best bet is to use a book bag filled with a bunch of books. Now, along with the first step, consistently training all three of these exercises, you also want to simultaneously be following the how to full planche guide. Training your full planche hold goes hand in hand with full planche pushups, especially if you want to be able to hold and rep out some reps as well. And I've already uploaded a video on how to do a full planche pushup step by step from the very beginning. So make sure you're following along with that video while you're doing this one. Now, once you're able to do 20 to 25 consecutive pseudo full planche pushups, at least 15 to 20 perfect repetitions of weighted dips with 25 pounds and at least 10 consecutive perfect pull-ups with 25 pounds. You're ready to move on to step two? I'll see you there. All right, so by now, if you've been consistently training everything that consists of step one and you've been able to pass the requirements, then you now have some new strength and skill to apply into step two. In step two, we're gonna be working on mastering our tuck planche push-ups. At this stage, you definitely wanna be following along with the how-to full planche guide, because if you have been, by now you would've already developed the skills, technique, and the strength to be able to hold a tuck planche. Now, I break down perfectly step-by-step -step how to hold a tuck planche and all the tips as well. So check it out on the how to full plan. Pausing the video real quick to remind you about the importance of a good diet. As you've heard me say so many times, if you want six pack abs, you need to be on a caloric deficit. And the best way to create a deficit is through training, but also eliminating unnecessary calories like sugary drinks and snacks from your diet. But with Earth Echo, they make it easy. You can still have desserts, whether you're trying to lose weight or just want to eat healthier with their Cacao Bliss as it's low in calorie, gluten-free, keto-friendly, vegan-friendly, kosher, low-carb, and white sugar-free, meaning anyone can try this. And best of all, it tastes delicious so you don't have to compromise taste for your health. Now, I don't always eat desserts myself, but after a heavy training session, sometimes I can afford a few extra calories. And with Cacao Bliss, making healthy desserts is easier than ever. Like these delicious, healthy brownies I just made, under 200 calories per serving. And you won't feel guilty eating these delicious, healthy brownies made using Cacao Bliss by Earth Echo. But you can try Cacao Bliss however you want, baked or in a drink. So try some today and use the link in the description and enter the code CHRISH to save 15% off your order right now. And again, thanks so much to Earth Echo for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to unlocking your planche push-ups. So assuming you've already been training and developing straight arm strength and can hold a tuck planche, we're just gonna be doing push-ups while maintaining a tuck planche position. So you can start off in a tuck planche with your arms locked out, then you're gonna lower your body down while remaining nice and flat, keeping your elbows in. That's gonna also allow you to maintain a flat position. You also wanna be leaning forward as you come down on your push-up as well as when you come up. That's gonna allow your body to maintain a flat horizontal position as well. Without paying attention to this leaning forward technique, you're gonna be very unbalanced and uneven as you go up and down on your tuck planche push-ups. And of of course, as you're leaning forward to get back up to the top of your repetition, you want to make sure that you're maintaining full range of motion, ending up with your arms locked out back at starting position again. Just like the pseudo planche push-ups and every other progression in this video, it's going to be a whole lot easier if you do it holding onto parallel bars, but you can also do every single one of these progressions with your hands flat on the ground as well. So first, just try to do one tuck planche push-up as perfect as possible. Once you can do that, you want to start increasing your perfect reps, not your sloppy reps. So the same technique you use to increase your push-ups, you're going to use to increase your tuck planche push-ups, doing one one perfect one every minute on the minute or as many as you can every minute on the minute for at least 10 minutes but if you're still struggling with this exercise to perform multiple repetitions you can always use the help of a resistance band just loop it onto anything above you like a pull-up bar then loop it onto your ankles and go for it this will allow you to do more repetitions and train past fatigue increasing the amount of reps that you can normally do without the band and if you need a pair of resistance bands that you can also apply to other exercises like the muscle up and front lever to take your training to the next level you can go ahead and pick up a pair right now at thenix.com shop so before moving on you want want to make sure that you can do at least eight to ten consecutive tuck planche push-ups with perfect form. Then we're ready for step three. See you there. All right, we've developed some serious strength and skill we're gonna be applying into this third step where we get even closer to simulating an actual full planche push-up. We're gonna be mastering the 90 degree hold, but first we're gonna start off with an even easier progression to make this transition seamless. And that's gonna be the alternating toe tap 90 degree hold. So to do 90 degree hold, you're gonna start off at the bottom of a pseudo planche push-up. And all the same rules of form and technique apply. You wanna have your body tight, leading forward, your hands as close to your waistline as possible, and your wrists turn out with your thumbs 
facing forward, allowing your wrists to give you even more range of motion to lean further. Now to levitate your body and get your legs off the ground from the bottom of a pseudo planche push-up, you don't want to kick up your feet. You actually want to just lean as far forward as you can, and eventually that's going to give you a counterbalance, alleviating more body weight from your lower body, allowing your feet to just rise off the ground versus kicking off the ground. If you're kicking to try to get up, that's going to be a long road that's likely not going to lead you to the nine degree hole. Now, the further you lean, the more strength it's going to require. And that's why we're starting off with the progression of alternating toe taps, nine degree hold. And we're going to start to alternate them as we try to lean as forward as possible. And when you first start this, you may be switching off pretty fast and that's okay. The more you do it, the stronger you're going to get. And as long as you keep working to having your hands closer and closer to your waistline, eventually you're going to be able to hold it for a lot longer and be able to control this movement. And at that point for a second, you actually will have both feet off the ground as you're alternating. You then want to make that transition last longer as you switch so that you're holding a 90 degree a little bit longer every single time. And once you can comfortably alternate your legs 10 times in a row consecutively, nice and controlled with perfect form, then you're ready to attempt your very first 90 degree hold. And when attempting your very first 90 degree hold, you can get down to the bottom of a pseudo planche push up and then lean forward enough until your toes push forward and then raise off the ground. And this is another one that you could just hold for a second or two when you're first starting off and eventually you're gonna be able to hold it for longer and longer. And you should also train this one your max hold every minute on the minute that's going to increase your hold time and consistently training this with the previous progressions and steps you're going to eventually be able to hold this for a whole lot longer you can also start from the top of a push-up position and lean forward and lower yourself down into the 90 if that feels more comfortable as well once you can hold your 90 degree with both feet off the ground perfectly and comfortably for at least 15 to 20 seconds you're ready for step four see there. All right, we're almost there to unlocking our very first full planche push-up. Moving on to step four, we're going to be working with two different progressions. The first one is going to be push-ups to 90 degree hold. And the second progression is 90 degree pumps. Both of these progressions stemming off of the 90 degree hold. So starting off with the push-up to 90 degree, you're going to lower your body down from a push-up position into a 90 degree hold, and then you're going to press back up into a normal push-up. Doing this exercise is very beneficial for your planche push-ups because you're able to hold your entire body weight for a significant amount of time and then transition into pushing. The same thing you're going to be doing in an actual full planche push-up, except you don't have to carry your entire body weight all the way up. And that's going to close the gap from not being able to do full planche push-ups all the way up and down with your entire body weight. The more you do this, the stronger you're going to get, and it's going to get a lot more comfortable and easier to press up as well as come down into that 90 degree hold. Eventually, you're going to feel like you're almost lifting off the ground when you press up, and that's the goal. Now remember, you want each rep to be as controlled as you can with absolute perfect form. And once you can do that for 10 to 15 reps consecutively and comfortably, you're ready to move on to the last and fifth progression for the full planche push-up. And with the other progression of step four we're right about to get into, you're actually gonna have the strength to attempt them for the first time. And that's kind of what we're gonna be doing with the 90 degree pumps. You're gonna hold a 90 degree, something that you should already be comfortable with, but for the first time, you're actually gonna try to apply some pushing strength and give it a little push. That's why they're called 90 degree pump. You're gonna give it a little pump and just elevate your body slightly while maintaining your 90 degree hold. Go for a couple reps or just go for one every minute on the minute and eventually you know how to increase your repetition. But the more you do it and the stronger you get, not only will you increase the repetitions of how many pumps you can do consecutively, but also how effective your pumps are and how high and powerful they are. So that should also be the goal over time of training this movement. You wanna to try to effectively get it higher and pump harder every single time. And of course, as you're doing these pumps, just like every other exercise we've done, you wanna squeeze everything, make your body a unit. And again, as I mentioned for all the previous progressions, this progression is no different. You can use assistance with a resistance band. Just remember the assistance from a resistance band is supposed to be a tool to help you progress. You don't wanna be relying on resistance bands. In fact, you wanna be training to wean yourself off of them. And like the previous exercises, this one can be done with your hands flat on the ground too. So try both elements. That's only going to make you stronger and progress you even faster. Once you can do seven to 10 pumps consecutively with perfect form, and of course, mastering the push-up to 90 degree progression, then you're ready to move on to the fifth and final step. And I'll see you there. All right, we're back on Miami Beach for the fifth and final step. By this point, you should have acquired some newfounded skill and strength. And with this final step, we're going to be applying them both together. Now, like I always say, if you want the concentric of a movement, you have to practice the negative, the eccentric. And that's exactly what we're going to do with the final step. We've acquired enough strength to be able to do a negative full planche push-up. We're just gonna rep these at least one every minute on the minute or max out as many as you can do every minute on the minute for at least 10 minutes. When you first start doing this, you may be dropping pretty fast and you may not even be able to hold that 90 degree hold at the bottom for that long. But the more you do it, you're gonna start dropping slower and eventually build more strength and control to be able to lower your body down to a 90 degree hold position comfortably. The more you focus on the negative portion of this movement, lowering down as controlled and slow as possible, the easier and the faster you're gonna get the concentric portion, being able to push back up. And all other techniques and form apply when doing this exercise. You want to be pushing from your waistline. You want to be leaning as far as you can, pointing your chin forward, pointing your toes back and keeping your body as a single unit in a straight line, squeezing your glutes, your core, your lats, as well as your grip. And this final step is so close from the actual full planche pushup. I was only doing this for a couple weeks until I finally unlocked my very first full planche pushup. So real quick, let me show you guys what that looks like. 
As you do your full planche negatives, even your full planche push-ups, you want to be constantly leaning forward. Starting from the very top with your arms locked out, you're going to be leaning forward as you lower your body all the way down so that you can stay leveled in a horizontal position and your hands can maintain pushing at the waistline, allowing you to go down as well as up completely flat. So as you go up, you want to make sure to lean forward as well. Once you really solidify this movement and you're comfortable with it, you can just jump into it like I did or you can start from an L-sit position to get that perfect form. It's a lot easier and better to practice this way. Lean forward and bring your legs back from an L-sit to a full planche position and then lower your body down with your hands by your waist. So if you've been thoroughly following along each step and training consistently, by this point you should have the strength and the skill to do your very first full planche push-up. So real quick, let me show you what that looks like. There you have it. Once you can do your very first, you want to train one every minute on the minute. Consistently training your one full planche push-up every minute on the minute along with the previous progressions is going to allow you to increase your repetitions and eventually you'll be able to go for two every minute on the minute, three every minute on the minute, and so forth. And you're all set. These are the exact steps that I took and many others that I've taught to unlock their full planche push-up. And I can't wait for you all to unlock your very first planche push-up as well. So make sure to tag me on Instagram, that's Chris Heria as well as Thenx, so that we can all see your progress and get inspired by your journey and maybe you'll get featured in the next vlog. So with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video or learned something please smash that like button we really appreciate it and it helps youtube share our videos to more people out there to show our appreciation if you comment down below within 30 minutes of any video you're always going to have a chance to win some hairy apparel so make sure you hit the subscribe button right now with bell notifications on so that you never miss out on a video i post every single thursday 2 p.m usa eastern time and don't forget to get full access to all my personal workout programs and workout routines that i've created with specific goals in mind like burning fat while simultaneously getting shredded and applying this type of your training into your everyday workout regimen not just looking strong actually being strong then make sure to download the hairy pro app right Right now in the app store or google play store and start getting in the best shape of your life right now with the harrier pro app thanks again for watching if there's anything that you're working on anything you want me to cover just let me know down in the comments below and we'll make sure to cover it in the next vlog till then i'll see you next thursday 2 p.m usa eastern time mad love and peace out